Hey, today on the 5-Minute Sales Trading, how do you stand apart from the competition in a challenging market? Stay tuned. Welcome, everyone, to another 5-Minute Sales Trading, where today we're talking about how to stand apart from the competition in a challenging market. Uh, if you're new here, thanks for being with us. We sure want you to subscribe. And everybody, just hit that like button. It only takes just a, a quick moment. And we're doing something a little different for a series of 5-Minute Sales Training. We're bringing on some experts to talk about very specific things that are important to this market. Today, I'm joined by my friend Taylor Humphrey down in Dallas, Texas, to talk a little bit about how to stand apart from the competition when the market shifts. Taylor, welcome to the 5-Minute Sales Training. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me, my friend. You bet. Let's have some, let's have some fun here. Uh, we've seen a shift in Dallas like we've seen in many marketplaces. Suddenly, there is competition, something we haven't seen a lot of. Guys, we're just talking about a little friendly competition. Uh, if you got salespeople who are out there, suddenly they're competitors. we got to find a way to stand apart, to separate ourselves from the group. What are you thinking? What's on the top of your head? I know we just sprung that on you, but what's on the top of your head to find a way to stand apart from everybody else that's out there? You know, the old school is going to tell you, know your competition. And you should. You should know their product, their features, and all that. But you should also know what makes your competition your competition. I mean, your, your salespeople. Like, what's their energy? What makes them tick? And what makes them unique so that you can stand uh, uh, stand out amongst the crowd, right? So, I, you know, I always walk our competition. I go through and I'll text my salespeople afterwards, like, hey, the energy is very low on the people next door or down the street. So what, what do you want to do? And if, if your, the energy is very low from your competition, what's, what's low-hanging fruit for you, right? Or it's going to be fun. It should be an atmosphere when they come, come through the door. So yes, you should be out walking your competition. You should know their features. You should go through the specs that they have. And you should own your competition and own your, uh, your market. But at the same time, you can control what you can't control, which is the environment that you're creating. And so know the energy and know what makes your um, uh, what makes you memorable. So, you know, for me, I was old school. I would even like do a bow tie or whatever to just try and make it to where I was memorable and make it yeah. to where it was a fun transaction. Yeah, it's cool. Bow ties are cool. You know, this is interesting because, you know, I often tell salespeople, go look at your competition. And when you do, you're going to look at what they're selling. You're going to go, oh, man, I win here and I win here and I win here. And he gets really excited about the product that you're selling about the home, the community, whatever it is. But what you're saying is that if they're out there shopping, they're shopping the salespeople as well. And they're going, oh, man, I can bring so much more positive energy than they do. Or the flip side, you might find a competitor sales uh, person who's really strong energetically to go, I got to pick up my game because my customers are having different experiences here. A hundred percent. So what I do is if, if we're getting beat or we, I feel mentally that my salesperson just doesn't know their competition, I'll say, hey, meet me at your model at 930, right? We know models open at 10 and we will go park at the end of the street and we will see what time they get there. What, how are they coming to the show, right? Like your retail space opens at 10. Are you getting there at 10? Or, you know, when everybody else is getting there? Like, let me ask you this. Another question. Is everybody working on Thursday and Friday? Well, that tells me on Tuesday and Wednesday, nobody's there. So let's mm -hmm. look at our traffic and go, hey, is that low hanging fruit? Like we know it's going to be competition on Saturday and Sunday, but should I be hitting Tuesday and Thursday harder because everybody's working on Thursday and Friday? And I'm not saying... I mean, you can kind of read between the lines on that. Like, you'll know your competition, but that could be something that you need to pivot and go, Wednesday? There's right. a heck of a lot of competition on Thursday and Friday. I want to take Tuesday and Wednesday and get those. Sometimes when we see a change in the market uh, marketplace and we look and we say, where is our competitor ad ad advantage? And we might say, I've got a better product. Maybe I've got a better energy level. But sometimes I got a builder down the street. Maybe they're a little bit desperate and they've got deals. They've got promotions. They've got incentives. And they're just flat giving away more than we have to offer. How do you counter that when you're when you've got what your customer is raising as a value disadvantage? You know, so one thing I always tell my sales team is if you can't change it, feature it, right? So incentive wise, if you're having those competition or those conversations with your manager and you're able to show and your manager is able to say, hey, this is really the right incentive that you should have. Okay, great. Move off center and go, okay, well, what's unique about me? Right. Now you should, you may need to go back to your manager and have, hey, data. Well, how did how do people that run 
if you got sales managers, not sales leaders, right? What, how do they think? How does your president think? Your president thinks on data. Great. Gather it all and come with a, a, uh, a great message of here's why I need more incentive. But if that's, if you've got the incentive that you need, then move off center and go, okay, I can't change that. But what, what can I feature that makes me unique? I've got a, a product that's our courtyard product and our square footages seem to be, you know, lower than what their competitions are. Right. But our, you, our uh, courtyard product is so unique. You don't, you're not trying to be everything to everyone. Your, compet- or your, uh, your product is designed specifically for that buyer. Know that buyer, own it, and go, go feature, feature it. Maybe it's video. Video is huge right now, right? So you, you didn't ask me that question, but um, don't underestimate the, the importance of, of video. The video killed. Uh, last 15 seconds, give us something uh, motivational, inspirational. Give us something that was going to help us to get our head on right uh, in a challenging market. Don't just look at your brand as in the company that you work for. Look at your personal brand. What does it look like on the different social media platforms and how are you approaching it, right? Don't just look to your marketing department to be generating traffic. How are you generating traffic? How are you, are you a value add to those realtors that you're out there going to realtor events and making those connections? What are you bringing to them that are going to make them look at you as an asset, somebody that they need to partner with to bring their, their, their business to you. Love it. Love it. Love it. Taylor Humphrey, just great stuff. And if, if you watch that, if you enjoyed it, that's great, but it's not just a matter of whether you enjoyed it, whether you're entertained. No, no. What do you do with it? So use what Taylor had to say as a checklist to be able to look at it and say, this is what I want to do differently today in order to beat the competition tomorrow. Thanks for watching everybody. And until next time, learn more to earn more. <laughs>